Bills. Okay. Sir, good morning, sir. I was just briefing. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the Saturday, uh, September, sorry, August 24th, 11.02 a.m. So we are starting our uh, uh, second series on CA regulations. So we have a wonderful, this is not going to be a presentation. It's more of a discussion, it's a panel discussion with eminent uh, uh, engineers today. So before we begin, uh, you know, we, I would like to introduce uh, NFE, National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety. We have a very dynamic uh, website, and if you see, visit our website, you can see all our programs, our YouTube links on various webinars, uh, such as today, which we are doing, a lot of blogs, a lot of you know, information. So we likely to you know, make that access to that particular um, page only members. So, you know, when you become a member, there is a lot many things are members are expecting. What do I get when I become a member by paying thousand rupees annually? What do I get? So what you get is the, you know, the huge library and everything about the standards and codes implementation and various programs. So we wanted to make this access to this um, uh, information for members only, so which will today as it is free. And um, our objective is very clear, clear, create awareness on electrical safety, fighting for today and uh, a better tomorrow. Vision of NFE, if you see, oh, I'm sorry again, I don't know. Uh, I missed out. There's some glitches on this sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Vision is to make every electrical installation free of accident, uh, such as electrocution and fire due to short circuits. If you see the newspaper, if you see social media, every day there is an electrocution. Just two, three days back in. Andhra Pradesh, uh, two innocent children while cycling, they got electrocuted. And today I read in a paper, again, the housewife got electrocuted. You know, uh, how much ever the awareness that you create, how much ever you want, your intention is, vision is there, but still a lot of death is happening. So whatever we are doing today through NFE, just a scratch, just an awareness that we are creating, you know, to get this 220, even the participant, we invite almost, you know, 30, 40,000 people to join this webinar to get the awareness. And we get 2% turnout and say, we would like to hear what you guys are talking. And this is a big challenge in India. When you want to give education, when you want to create awareness, you know, the acceptance to learn is, is, a, is, is something that we need to really uh, work hard to get those attention. So our mission is uh, very clear. We shall strive to achieve our vision through getting accredited of, for product personal certification, which is already we've started. We shall focus on electrical safety by design, manufacturing, installation and maintenance of electrical product and installation by competent, qualified manpower using quality resource, including product process and procedure, which we already started this program in NFE. What we do, you have seen that we are traveling length and breadth of the country. Every week, almost every week, we do a webinar. So far, we have done 56 webinars and 27 seminars or workshop. We have touched 58,000 people till today. You know, when I say 50, it's an eye contact. It's not by writing an email or something. Eye contact with audience is 58,000. We are one of the fastest growing society in India. In 18 months, the kind of, you know, program, the kind of membership growth, the chapters that we opened is amazing. None of the society in India has done that. So we are very proud of it. That's a great achievement when we selflessly work towards creating awareness, traveling length and breadth, sleepless you know, nights that we travel. The satisfaction that you get when you sleep is that we are growing. We are able to change few minds. We are able to touch upon few people. So that is the biggest satisfaction that we get at the end of the day of doing all this. 
So we have our president today, we have a secretary, we have founding members, we have regional directors uh, today. So they will, I'll continue to introduce them. And why you have to be part of this movement, you know, it's, it's a very simple, you have seen the progress that we have made. And it's just a thousand rupees. If you're two friends of you join together, go to a lunch, that costs you thousand rupees. This is thousand rupees is for investment that you're making to, you know, educate yourself, create awareness among yourself and try to get certification program. So thousand rupees for one year is nothing. It's almost three rupees a day. So I would urge members who are listening to me, who are there, I would urge to become a member of uh, Focus, uh, sorry, a member of NFE. So we have corporate member, it's just a 5,000 rupees annually, then we have MSME 2,500. So we have now crossed 1,500. Yesterday we did a wonderful program in uh, Surat. We had 420, you know, our registration was 407, uh, sorry, 500 and plus registration out of that. 410 was the uh, participants. We are so kind to the Gujarat government because they, you know, inspired us. They took the initiative. The chief electrical inspector himself was there from start to end. He came one day before to ensure arrangements were made. The entire office was there to ensure. So the Gujarat will have the, you know, I think uh, the chapters in Ahmedabad, Surat and Baroda very soon. I want to thank, uh, through this webinar, I want to thank uh, Gujarat government for supporting NFE. And, uh, you know, just I'm just bringing a few clips on what we did on, the, you know, July uh, 20, uh, 27, we spoke about electrical safety in hospital. That was the need of the hour. Then we t t spoke about poor quality uh, measurement. Haribala is one of our passionate members, and Sachin Vela did that uh, program. And uh, last uh, Saturday, on uh, 11th of August, we talk, spoke about harmonics and switching tra transient uh, analysis by Dr. Chilukri. We had a very good uh, participation. And today, it's a series two on uh, CA regulations, uh, moderated by our general secretary, Mr. Uh, Pavu sir is a retired, I'll just read out the um, uh, profile of each uh, uh, panelist today. So our general secretary, Mr. Uh, Apavu sir, is a, a retired chief electrical inspectorate of Tamil Nadu government. He specializes in electrical safety, earthing practices and energy audit. With international experience, including presentation in Japan and training in Germany, he advises on LV and MV installation as per CA regulation. We are so kind after his retirement, he is actually is more busier than is while he was serving the government. So he, under his guidance, we are, you know, taking a leap in uh, developing this uh, association. Our very another passionate, uh, you know, uh, very aggressive regional director of uh, Focus, uh, Bush and Mankare sir is here. He's an electrical engineer with over 27 years of experience in design, safety, maintenance, conducted seminars and training sessions on electrical safety, RCD testing and earthing techniques at various institutions, including Sakal uh, Bhavan, ITI Wagle, Wagle uh, Jupiter Hospital. He's a member of uh, ISTRE and uh, Fire Safe India Foundation. We have our founding member, Eman Sali sir. He is a retired after 39 years ex in, um, the contribution uh, to the electrical wing of PW, uh, PW, PWD of Maharashtra, where he served as electrical inspector and superintendent engineer, specializing, specializing in electricity loss, accident and investigations, and government installations. He now advises Ministry of Roads, Highways, Transports as a technical advisor and consult on electrical safety. We thank you, uh, Eman sir, for joining today. Then we have very passionate uh, NFE member, Abhijit, a certified energy auditor with BTEC from VNIT Nagpur and PGDM from Wellinker, as extensive experience in electrical engineering across 
uh, the role has in Siemens, PC System, Amar Raja, Hager India, and ABB. Currently, the senior consultant and VL engineers specializing in electrical distribution design and is passionate about Industry 4.0 and energy efficient system. We have two more uh, panelists. Uh, Manuvarki Sir, member of uh, NFE, is an executive engineer and senior manager in CPWD Palakkad. Holds BTEC from College of Engineering Trivandrum and ME from I Institute of Science Bangalore. With over a decade of experience, he has worked on major projects like IIT Palakkad, uh, JIPMER, and actively contributed to open source projects developing electrical and sorry, e, uh, G electrical and G estimated software. Uh, welcome, uh, Manuvar sir. The last panelist, uh, Shankar Shirolkar, an electrical engineer with B and MS Electrical Energy System, specializes in power distribution and renewable energy system, including rooftop solar PV installation. As CEO of Sne Snehankit, hope I'm pronouncing well, Snehankit Electricals Private Limited, he manages industrial scale, industrial scale projects and excel in full project life cycle from planning to commissioning across diverse industry. So this is our, uh, sorry, yeah. Okay, these are the lovely panelists, expertise today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we also have an observer, uh, President Mr. Gopakumar, as a, uh, as a member in this whole group. And uh, as I said, we are growing, you know, we are growing as one of the, you know, uh, like a bullet train in the country about uh, fire safety. And all the expertise today are very passionate members of uh, uh, NFE. I now leave, give this platform to our uh, uh, moderator, Apau, sir, the General Secretary of NFE. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. I will first share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> you have to unshare, sir. So, Damniji, please unshare your screen. Ramniji, please unshare your screen, sir. Sir, I have unshared. Let me no. log out and come in. I have unshared. It is not showing sharing. No, no, Let... no, no. But uh, my screen is not coming. Okay. Uh -huh. One um, share. I'll log out and, uh, you know, I'm back, right? You have any difficulty, sir? Yes, um, I'm just a share. Yes, sir. We can see the screen, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank Ministry you. of Law and Justice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, uh, President Shri Gopati and Damniji and all the panelists, uh, the participants of this webinar. So we this is the second of its kind we had 
recently a webinar on the same subject. However, we will try to uh, address the audience and the awareness that is more uh, required because we are all going on technical uh, intricate things every day. But we do not uh, know, we, we, we do not uh, deal much with the fundamentals, that is the safety regulations and uh, other things based on which only our final objective is yet to happen. So accordingly, we have uh, panelists with rich experiences. So first of all, I would like to uh, invite uh, Shay Hammond Saliji uh, from Maharashtra. He is our member. Uh, he has a very rich experience of over 40 years and he is also uh, experienced in the formulation. He is activating uh, himself throughout his uh, entire career in specifically in the field of uh, regulations and standards. So I should thank him for his uh, thing. Sir, we, what I would like to uh, address this issue today is, we are having so many regulations in place, so many uh, standards in place, and uh, also a very good act in place. In spite of that, we uh, the accidents, electrocutions happen every day and uh, it's more alarming and uh, affecting the minds of people uh, the, it creates a fear among the public uh, on the electricity so in this background i would like to uh, request you to say a few words about the, the provisions of the act uh, especially the penal provisions and uh, you know that most of the accidents occur in forward lines so as an expert, please uh, deal something with this uh, menace to curtail the future accidents that should not happen in our country. Thank you, Mr. Charlie. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for introducing me. Uh, <clears throat> see, the, you have raised actually correct point. So many accidents are happening. And I think uh, nothing is happening after the accident happens. That is a great pain. Uh, the concerned person, the person who is responsible, most of the times he escapes. So we need to think whether there are some gaps in our actually enforcement of regulatory provisions. Uh, see, we do have section 146. <clears throat> uh, will it be 146, please, sir. Yes. So this yes. section 146 tells us if there is any contravention with the rules and regulations made under the act, that is a punishable thing. That punishable is imprisonment as well as even the penalty also, financial penalty also. So provision is already there. If we overrule any of the provision of the regulations, safety regulations, the person who is responsible should be get punished. One more thing this section tells us about a abater, means the person who indirectly helps the offense to happen is also punishable. So abatement, in a sense, what we can say, suppose somebody somebody uh, indirectly helps, means anything which happens to electrical installation, the person who is not directly involved in erection or construction of an electrical installation, but he's involved in that, he becomes punishable. Suppose somebody constructs any um, structure close to the or in the vicinity of electrical line not following the rules and regulations he also becomes punishable so there are provisions uh, in our uh, regulations which tells us who can be punished and how it can be punished one more regulation if you can see the regulation number 151 uh, Uh, cognizance of offense means when any accident happens, who can file a complaint in the government? So this this section tells us about the person who becomes uh, punishable. Uh, the certain authority should make a complaint to the government uh, to the court. Court will not take any cognizance of offense punishable under the act unless it is made. Uh, uh, any uh, application to the court 
by the authority who will be electrical inspector who could be the supply company i mean the licensee or generating company so this is this is the what uh, this provision in the act so common person if he sees any uh, anything which is not as per the rules and regulation he cannot go to the court and file any complaint so these authorities are limited to the only government authorities like electrical inspector or the supply company so this is one thing which is somewhat maybe obstructing because as a common person see a, so many of non i mean non standard thing or dangerous things in contravention with the rules and regulation but he cannot directly approach to the court so these are the limitations one amendment was made in this uh, in 2007 in electricity act 2003 one amendment was made uh, they included the police also who can file the complaint previously police were not allowed to file uh, uh, i mean uh, register any case in the court but now they have allowed this also so when any accidents happens the concerned officer who investigates the accident or who reports the accident like supply company he should give the total detailed information to the electric inspector electrical inspector will decide who is responsible for the accident he will find out which rules were the which what was the breach of rules which caused the accidents and he can register a complaint to the court or he can report it to the police and police will file a case against the person responsible so these are the existing provisions with us with which we can control the electrical accidents which are happening one more section sir you just mentioned that section 68 that yes, section yes yes <laughs> uh, uh section 68 uh, sir uh, if you see the form number 20 which is uh, i mean which is mandatory for every state to report to the central city authority accident number of accidents happening uh, there is one of the reason which has been mentioned that accident happening due to snapping of conductors and if you will see the report uh, which is submitted under form number 19 and 20 maximum accidents happening because of a conductor snapping and overhead lines this is the case even in underground cables also accidents are causing this section 68 actually tells us about uh, there are certain rules made uh, the state have to make some make certain rules under which this overhead overhead lines can be constructed or any changes can be made within that uh, of course this uh, section is not directly i mean pointing the safety of electrical lines but it is telling it is giving some rules through which we can make construct the electrical line and government can give the permission for the construction of electrical line if you really want to see what rules are to be observed that was given in that are given in the central city act regulations regulations number 62 to 65 control all the safety part of that so okay. this is the case yeah. i will come to 60 regulation 62 to 65 will come at okay, a later session yes Now, sir i would like to say anything because uh, uh, as far as section as you open the section 68 he yeah. deals with uh, it's a supportive part uh, in regulation 62 to 65 is already there in regulation so section 68 deals with the go the prior approval of government even right. if it lies within the consumer premises and the voltage exceeds 11 kV and if they provide a uh, single uh, consumer so the intention is uh, to provide stringent measures for overhead line uh, especially so we will deal with the section 62 to 65 later so now as of now uh, the major cause of uh, as you said that major cause of electrocutions are from watch lines so to curb this menace uh, the government is taking steps and the act as well as the regulations are also also already there so thank you mr hemant uh, jali ji next uh, i will ask uh, uh, our another expert that is mr uh, uh manuvarki sir mr manuvarki ji sir are you ah thank you uh, so he is a uh, uh, cpwd executive engineer he got uh, 
uh, vast experience and expertise, uh, especially in regions like Andaman and Copper, and uh, expertise in very big projects uh, like Jeepmer and IIT. Sir, even where uh, he is also an expert in uh, specific regulation, and in fact, uh, stop by share and go to the regulation stage. Well, just a moment, Mr. Sir, what I want to know because we are all concerned with the overage lines. So this is again another uh, topic uh, which is related to the uh, to the consumer insulation. That is, consumer insulations are also affected for the fault happening in the HVC. So we want to elaborate on this. I, for that, I will upload my uh, share my screen on regulations. Just a moment, sir. I'll go to regulations. Okay, is it visible? Sorry. Yes, it is. Ah. So, coming to the subject, uh, uh, there is a great concern on the failure of consumer equipment during the SV side fault. And uh, there are also possible attribution to the uh, people in LT premises for the fault of uh, uh, supplier as well as their own distribution transformers from the SV side. Yes. Would you like yes. to about the specific provision of the act? Actually, as, as per regulation 18, the, the supplier has to make available an earth terminal within the consumer premise. And uh, the consumer can connect his earth, earth electrodes to this earth terminal. So the idea behind it is to provide a reliable uh, earthing connection for the consumer to utilize. But uh, uh, if you just see the regulation 18, it seems that this is very easy to implement and would benefit the consumer. But the issue why this is not getting implemented is once you connect the consumer's installation to the uh, supplier's uh, terminal, the whatever uh, high, uh, faults occurring within the supplier's terminal will affect the consumer's terminal and it can create a dangerous scenario because the supplier in uh, most of the suppliers in our country is not following the regulations with regard to their own equipment. Uh, for example, there are two concerns in this. One is the supplier is to uh, earth this nodal terminal at multiple points along the supply line so, uh, so as to 
prevent the uh, or what is on account of a broken neuron that is one uh, aspect of it and the second aspect is the a fault occurring on the high voltage side on the supplier's uh, succession do not cause a dangerous over voltage on the consumer installation since in our country most of the installations are rural installations where the ground potential rise on account of a uh, st earth fault is going to be very high and if you are linking the neutral to the uh, body earthing of the supplier then the consumer installation will be subjected to a dangerous over voltage so if the supplier is not segregating his uh, neutral earthing from the body earthing that he utilizes for his uh, uh, substation equipment then a it creates a dangerous situation for the consumer so that is the uh, issue that we are facing in this uh, regulation especially yes thank you mr mohan ji actually it's a concern that uh, frequent uh, sensitive electric because most of the domestic premises are now flooded with uh, power electronics devices whether it's a laptop or uh, led tv or led lamps all are uh, sensitive to the over voltage uh, also for such over voltage the consumers uh, gears uh, protective gears won't work because it is a uh, fault from the outside of the premises so Actually, what is uh, uh, my uh, uh, sorry, uh, view regarding this is first we have to make the supplier's installation compliant to the code before going on for insisting the consumer to connect uh, uh, his uh, terminal to the supplier the supplier terminal has to be safe to connect so yes. without this the uh, implementation of this regulation is uh, will be difficult to enforce yes this is the only thing that uh, that is yet to be corrected though this particular regulation is existing over a period of uh, nearly 100 years uh, in our country especially in our country uh, in the other areas in the developed world and other countries there is no such issue because we have uh, not uh, clearly provided a uh, integrated uh, say pme system which is a, a protective multiple earthing system by the distribution company uh, up to the consumer premises so if the consumer wants to connect as per regulation he will be subjecting his person to a shock voltage so say these are the things so some uh, uh, so consumer should be aware what is the system of distribution i think system of distribution transformer and then accordingly he has to choose whether it should be connected or disconnected he has to adapt a uh, what do you call the uh, tt system so mr hamon shali i think you have raised the issue please please sir, please please offer your opinion yeah sir <laughs> So I want to add in this thing, see in the, our recent regulations, which were published in June 23, one more thing which was added, which is surplus responsibility, that he should earth the neutral at consumer's premises. This is in addition to the protective multiple earthing of the neutral. And uh, again, in I'll tell you, in most of the cities, urban areas, underground uh, cable work is done. Previously, it was overhead <clears throat> lines and overhead line neutral conductor was run on the aluminum bobbin. So at every pole, the neutral was getting earthed. So that was, uh, I mean, providing us protective multiple earthing. But now in case of this underground cable work, a neutral should be earthed at every, every feeder pillar. So that will provide us a good uh, protective multiple earthing. And <laughs> after that also, at consumer salt premises also, the, it is a responsibility of the supplier to earth his uh, neutral uh, at consumer's premises. So if this happens and if it is enforced properly, I think this danger will get eliminated. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ji. So in short, what I can say is we have a strong uh, uh, overhead power grid, but we have a very weak uh, underground earth grid. This is what I can say. Because the protective multiple earthing is missing either at the poles or at the consumer premises and consumer in turn is reluctant to connect as per regulation to avoid shock. So these are all the things we can't compel either the consumer or the uh, discom. But what we can do is uh, there should be a, a, a strong approach 
to to uh, what do you call to uh, abide by the regulation at least from now on starting from every uh, state so we have to take a uh, good step on this so i will come to sir mr sunil beswal uh, i will come to you sir after the during the uh, uh, question and answer sir. so please play Please put your question and answer. Uh, during that time, we will call you for your specific remarks. Now, I would like to uh, request Mr. Manuvarki on one more uh, aspect because uh, as per uh, regulation, most of the accidents occur in healthy domestic premises and due to altercation matters. So, apart from lines, there are several accidents occur in consumer premises. So, the measures are already there in the regulations, but people often uh, confuse with the correct application of our city. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate on this uh, uh, provision, specific provision of life saving uh, technique among the consumer? Please, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, regulation 43 deals with the providing residual current devices uh, for all electrical installations. So, this is in addition to any. Uh, in TNA system, you are not required to provide a residual current device and automatic disconnection of supply takes care of dealing with the faults. So this is an additional measure, additional protective measure on uh, above the uh, fault protection measure to safeguard the insulation. So this uh, writing of the RCD is uh, limited to 30 milliamps for uh, domestic insulations uh, in view of the life safety aspect. Uh, but uh, an issue here is uh, the type of uh, uh, RCCB that is uh, used in most of the installation is AC type, which is only suitable for AC installations and is not suitable for installations where uh, large electronic components with the rectifier uh, uh, input is available. In such case, a type A, at least a type A RCD is to be used. So, but uh, there is an issue with the market availability of this RCD. So that is an issue that is being faced regarding this regulation. Yes, thank you, thank you, Ji. Because uh, we do have uh, all the uh, non sinusoidal uh, wave distorting devices, gadgets everywhere in homes. So we we can't rely upon the uh, AC class AC RCD. We have to settle issues other type class A at least for the domestic premises. So there are various type of RCDs, class A, C, A, F, B. So these are the things. Nowadays we are uh, having solar PV also for which we have to select. Uh, class uh, type B RCDs. Uh, type B yes, RCDs. So these are the things that uh, the consumers should be aware because they should not say the RCD is a uh, life-saving device. You should trip or it should not nuisancely trip. So unless we select a proper RCD, uh, either we will be deprived of safety or we will be deprived of supply continuity. Once the demand rises and consumer awareness rises, we hope that uh, the manufacturer will also go for such uh, uh, massive production. Now it's very difficult to get it, but it is available. So people won't raise their uh, awareness and go for the the procurement of such devices, then I hope these things will improve. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Manuji. I will come to you again on another point. So, uh, uh, next, I would like to call Mr. Uh, Bhushan Mankam, our regional director of Mumbai uh, of NFE. Uh, Mr. Sir, do you, are you here? Mr. Bhushan? I think uh, Bhushan, Bhushan is not in land. So, uh, yeah. Abhijit, are you... Sir, Mr. Bhushan is there. His mic is yeah. off. Oh, Bhushan, uh, he's, he's not. Uh... Okay, you light. I think he will resign. We light. Uh... Um... Okay, next time we will go to Mr. Abhijit Limai. Are you here, sir? Mr. Abhijit? Uh, yes, I am there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Abhijit, uh, I would like to say that he is a, uh, he appeared for the CEC and 
became the first uh, uh, topper in that CSE. I just congratulate you, sir. You should be a model for the uh, people of the next generation to appear for such uh, examination and get themselves uh, competent in doing things. So, with that in mind, I would like to uh, ask you a few questions uh, because uh, frequently we we are uh, dealing with the subject of uh, uh, synchronization of generators, especially the diesel generator sets we are using for uh, mm -hmm. all science installations, where whether it is a LT installation or ST installation, the synchronization has uh, become a necessity. Uh, the specifically, whether we have to provide a neutral isolation and so many contactors and uh, PLC circuits when the uh, regulation as well as uh, the uh, standards insist a single point thing are common at thing. And then people are uh, nowadays accustomed with the parties of providing the same thing that you have been following followed for several decades. So in which I would like to uh, request your input as a specialist in CGS. Please uh, be the number one. Uh, what should be the uh, practice adopted under regulation uh, for neutral switching of parallel generators? Yes, sir. Thank you. Please. So, uh, so, when it comes to, let's say, diesel generators, uh, typically when we are talking about synchronization, we'll be talking about uh, two generators or more. So, the problem uh, will be rarely there if you're going to have one generator. So if you have one generator, one transformer, you know, the matter is quite simple. You have a four pole breaker at the transformer end, you have a four pole breaker at the uh, DG end, and you can have the neutral in place when the DG is turned on. However, uh, when it comes to multiple generators and multiple neutral switching, now typically switch neutral is a phenomenon which uh, has only come because of harmonics in the system. So people prefer to have four pole breakers at the uh, generator end in order to ensure that in case of neutral overload, in case of harmonics, the breaker can, these breakers can be tripped. However, another problem that arises is that in case uh, these neutrals are separately earthed and one of the transformer neutral gets disconnected from earth and it uh, there could be dangerous over voltages if the reference uh, of the transformer neutral doesn't get established. And also, in case of multiple neutrals, let's say you have multiple transformers, the standard practice would be to bring all the neutrals to a common bus and then earth that common bus and then maybe switch that neutral through a neutral contactor in case a switch neutral is needed. Otherwise, in case if you the problem of harmonics is not so predominant in the system. The best practice would be just to have a common neutral bus, earth it, and don't have a switch neutral. The regulation specifically talks about scenarios where there is a neutral switching. So in case if you're using a neutral contactor to switch on the neutral, interlock should be established so that unless the neutral contactor is on, the DG breaker should not get turned on. So that, that would prevent us from, you know, uh, damaging the DG through dangerous over voltages. That is the practice uh, behind it. Uh, the best practice would still be to bring it to a common bus, earth it as common and have a neutral contactor. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jumai. Uh, the thing is, uh, the specific provision you can see interlock where you can go through it where two or more generators operate in parallel and a neutral switching is adapted interlock shall be provided so the where it is necessary so strong, uh, regulation do not say that you must go for the neutral switching if you provide the, the previously still people are practicing this neutral switching in spite of the fact the recent generators do not have uh, harmonics with the uh, windings, uh, with a specialized uh, provision in the winding technology. So there are no harmonics. In other words, what I can say is uh, mitigating harmonics in the parallel generator, uh, it gives a less harm than mitigating the fault because 
the parallel generators if a single generator is subjected to a neutral then the fault current will have to be fed by the single generator if you uh, provide a common bus bar for all the neutrals as per as per standards then the parallel generators will be feeding the fault current as well as the uh, return neutral will also be shared so there can't be any harm so because we are having so many uh, problem in uh, neutral contactors and plcs ultimately uh, the very purpose of uh, supply continuity is also defeated uh, despite this uh, meager harmonic issues the major issues are forgotten that's our view that we have discussed with various uh, experts in this subject so next i would like to uh, request mr uh, abji ji see we are having uh, a new regulation to the effect that uh, cables we have to give least importance to the cables as far as possible where we can go for bus that are trunking in a yeah, people uh, where people uh, presence are more uh, like multi story buildings and shopping complexes Uh, these things are to be a what do you feel about the regulation uh, which is specifically stating uh, these measures of using uh, bus bar trunking etc please mr uh, abhijit yeah so uh, but about bus trunking there are you know, two aspects one is uh, when we talk about high rise buildings greater than 15 meter the regulation clearly states that you should be using a bus riser where floor wise distribution can be done through the bus riser another aspect is also related to uh, the standards uh, i think in uh, is 732 which specifies that cables should not be subjected to carrying too much current there were earlier practices where we were using multiple runs of cable three runs four runs five runs so is 732 talks about an aspect where if possible if practically possible beyond four runs of cable need not be used they can be substituted by bus trunking so that is the practice which happens uh, which is specified by the standards and again when it comes to high rise towers these days so there in bus risers is a very simple practice which simplifies things today we have uh, in mumbai most of the towers beyond 15 20 floors and which goes to height of almost 50 meters and above the earlier practice was having all metering boxes at the ground floor or in some dedicated room and then taking all the cables up to the flat so you can imagine the voltage drops as well as the cable losses that could be uh, present in it now when it comes to having uh, bus risers rising means the voltage drops can be reduced to a much much lower level i think in nec it is specified that from the point of su uh, supply to let's say the end point of a lighting circuit or a power circuit the voltage drops needs to be regulated to about 6% and such a regulation voltage regulation would not be possible if you are in a high rise if you are going to take cables from downstairs to upstairs so hence the regulation talks about uh, rising mains so using a bus bar trunking system and also yes. it gives us a uh, option specifically in it parks for individual based metering where you can have floor based metering on every floor and also if it is related to uh, multiple transformers you can have different different metering on each of them and have a different rising means for them that is the practice and that's the convention ah uh, uh, thank you uh, mr abhijit so as you said that uh, people in a massive fire do not die of electrocution they die due to fire uh, sorry due to smoke that engulfs So where do these toxic smokes come from? Is primarily from cables. <laughs> so every possibility of uh, avoiding the cables would be a solution. That's why the regulation uh, provides make use of the bus bar trunking system. That bus bar trunking means not for the uh, major transformer to main panel or generator to main panel. It is specifically for the floors. They have specifically stated for the floors because. in the floors we have uh, individual small small trunking system is possible we already have this trunking for uh, uh, 
small small installation like garment industries and it installations so in all the data centers as well as the garment industry we are having already the bus bar trunking system then why can't these uh, trunking small thing it will be of 63 amps that is sufficient for the consumers regarding the metering provisions etc these are all commercial items that has to be i am happy that i learned that mscb or maharashtra state have come to a, a decision to provide meter at the uh, 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 flat consumer premises itself so here it will be a helping hand for the regular for the regulatory commission also to uh, be uh, compliant with this specific regulation because it addresses the, the reduction of uh, the cable and provision of bus bar trunking, especially in the ducts and rice events. So it's a good thing that uh, we learned uh, from BGG regarding the bus bar trunking system. Uh, is there anything you would like to add on this specific uh, provision? Mr. Abhijit? In the case, uh, this I think you've cleared the most of the points. Yes. Uh, is it uh, so in uh, Mumbai that uh, metering as uh, uh, advice to be, can be provided at the time? Uh, flat owners premises as a result instead of the there is a provision there is a provision but i'm, I'm not sure how many uh, builders are using it okay so it has to take up this bus bar trunking system has to take up for the safety of uh, occupants uh, in either in a uh, multi-story building or people assembling area or commercial system so, okay thank you mr Manuvarti. next i would like to uh, come to our uh, Panelists, another panelist, that is Mr. Shashank. Uh, he is an expert, sir. Are you here, Mr. Shashank? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Thank, you. thank you for inviting me. Am okay. I audible? Ah, yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, so, Shashank is, uh, he is a consultant as well as a contractor and he has uh, devised some uh, models for a safe distribution of electricity, especially. Uh, transformers and uh, the breakers all in company and all. So uh, we would like to hear from you, sir, now. Uh, I think uh, the electricity authority, CEA regulation has also insisted for the breakers at the point of supply, irrespective of the capacity. Uh, could you throw some light uh, on this specific regulation, which requires uh, all the consumer premises who are availing levered KV and the above supply shall be uh, required to provide a blacker. Now, could you please uh, throw some light on this and what are all the issues or uh, advantages, uh, sir? I will, I will just go slide to this regulation, particular regulation. Regulation yes. 30, 37 or 38? Yes, regulation number 37, clauses number two and three. Yes, yes. I will go to this. Yes. Okay. Is it visible? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Please, sir. So, regulation. Yeah. Sir, uh, this regulation, uh, which has come up in, uh, I think, June 2023, it states that the consumers uh, who are uh, below 11 kV, that is like 3.3 uh, and 6.6 .6 kV consumers are permitted to use switch fuse unit or a circuit breaker uh, uh, at the point of supply. And uh, they have given a condition wherein transformer is above 1000 kVA. For these consumers, breaker is mandatory. On the other hand, uh, when they go into the 11 kV and above voltage level, that is 11, 22 and 33 kV voltage level, they have mandated circuit breaker by the consumers. Now, uh, earlier what used to happen uh, in uh, uh, at ground is that above 1000 kV, it was mandatory for the consumer to provide a breaker before transformer. Now, after this new regulation, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, issues that have come up while working on field. Uh, 
I will try to explain it in case by case manner. Uh, number one thing I would like to point out is that uh, this high tension power supply, HT supply, where this 11, 22, 33 kV voltage level comes into force, it starts from 50 kilowatt onwards uh, in various states. Like, for example, if you speak about Maharashtra, uh, they have a mandate wherein about 200 kilowatt you have to go for HT supply. Up to 200 kilowatt LT supply can be given. So, uh, same same law. If I go to say Gujarat or Madhya Pradesh area, they have a mandate above 50 kilowatt. You have to go for high tension supply. They don't have that kind of infrastructure network wherein they can provide uh, LT supply at say 100 kW or uh, say 150 kW. So now, uh, as per the field practice, what is happening is that. Uh, when the suppliers uh, supply, say 11 kV supply is coming to a factory industry. So the as per DISCOM norms, uh, nowadays they have to provide a ringman unit before uh, taking the supply. And the ringman unit en encompasses a circuit breaker inside it. And then the supply is fed to the consumer's meter, HT meter. And uh, after that, then comes the... Uh, earlier it used to be a switch fuse unit or a circuit breaker. Now, by this law, what has happened? Consumer has to provide a circuit breaker at that point. And then it comes, uh, then the supply is fed to the transformer. On the LT side also, once again, there is a circuit breaker. Now, uh, what is happening is that uh, there are multiple number of circuit breakers serving the same function. If you see, there is a circuit breaker in ringman unit. There is a circuit breaker before the transformer, then there is a circuit breaker after the transformer. And uh, if we see another case, uh, if uh, is that when the transformer is located at the rear end of the factory, like sometimes, uh, uh, like uh, DISCOM has a mandate that they should provide the metering and uh, metering near the gate. So many a times, uh, what consumers do uh, is that. They provide entire substation like uh, say meter, HT meter, transformer, switch gear, breakers, everything near the gate. Sometimes uh, that transformer is shifted behind uh, like due to space limitations or whatsoever. In that case, what is happening is that near the point of supply, there is a breaker. Uh, while tapping the supply, that is taking the supply from the over overhead line, uh, as per DISCOM norm, consumer has to provide a ringman unit. And then again, the transformer, which is located behind, there also you have to provide another circuit breaker. What is happening is that like three, three circuit breakers on HT side has come up due to all these regulations. And uh, like uh, this has, uh, what, ha what happens is that it not only like, uh, increases the cost, life cycle cost, uh, it becomes a burden to the MSME consumer. Because if you see, uh, like the industries uh, which operate from say 50 kilowatt to 1000 kilowatt are the MSME industries, which are the backbone of our economy. And on them, this burden comes and all the breakers are going to somehow serve the similar function that is to provide a safety. So I, I personally believe that there needs to be a correction that needs to come in this uh, area. And uh, like in the earlier 2022 draft or 2021 draft, which the CEA had published, there they had given a, uh, uh, what you say, draft, wherein up to 1250 kVA transformer for 11, 22, 33 kV consumers, it was a switch fuse unit option or a circuit breaker option. Now, suddenly, abruptly, overnight, they have changed the law to 11 kV and above circuit breakers. Uh, but on ground, there are a lot of problems which are coming up due to this. And uh, another contradicting point uh, I would uh, like to bring to everybody's attention. Sir, could you please open clause number 47, point number 2? Hello. 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 Am I audible? You're audible, sir. 
uh, yeah okay. yeah so if you read the clause number 47 uh, point number 2 2 yeah it is page number 119 in the <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, oh, sorry, point number three. Point number no, it is something different because I have the copy of uh, original copy. Uh, anyways, I will read out the point to you. Which point do you want to cover? I can tell the regulation. Uh, it want shows the Buckholz relay pressure relief device ah, and winding okay. and oil temperature. Okay, okay, that is above. You can start that because it is a general technical point beyond thousand. Yeah, but Ah. Yeah, over here they have clearly mentioned that all these protections, which are like when we talk about safety, are to be provided for transformers which are thousand kV and above only. So when yes, we go, you can go through this regulation. Yes, because... yes, that that correct. Point hmm. number three, it states that the call relay pressure relief oil uh, winding, all the temperatures basically are to uh, are to be provided beyond 1000 kva transformer and on the other hand they are insist uh, it is a widely known fact all these protections or the safety systems can be provided with the help of a breaker only circuit breaker so uh, the question comes to our mind is that why to uh, mandate circuit breaker below 1000 kva because as such if we don't provide all such protections in the installation the that circuit breaker is also pro going to serve the similar function of the earlier switch phase unit. Okay, I understand, sir. I understand because our 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 aim, our our interpretation is uh, whether the breaker is. Uh, I think one of our expert, Mr. Panelist, Mr. Hamaswali, raised. Yes. Please, sir, please offer your views. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to add. See what he mentioned about the financial burden. That is, I totally agree with. But the reason behind this changing from switch fuse unit to circuit breaker at the point of supply, it is because the con the fault occurred at consumer's premises shall not break the breaker of substation of the supplier. So this is the main reason because circuit breaker is considered to be more reliable than switch fuse unit. And many times what happens because of the consumer's fault, if it is not, uh, I mean, protected properly, it passes to the substation of the supplier and it breaks the whole uh, major part of electrical system. So that's why this regulation has come up. Of course, we have given some suggestion to CEA for some making some uh, changes into that. It is under consideration, but I don't know whether it will happen or not. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Sir, I would like to add something in this. Yes, sir. Please, please. Please come on. So uh, we couldn't uh, uh, see you. <laughs> I will come I, to a question. There was some issue with my uh, mic again, so it got delayed. I'm sorry for that. So yes. uh, coming to the this uh, point of uh, circuit breaker that Mrs. Shank has said, uh, the main intention in uh, the CA regulation is the safety thing. And when it comes to safety, isolation of supply at the right location is the intent behind this 37 regulation. Uh, many a time what happens is there is some kind of um, problem, electrical problem taking place in the factory and since the isolation uh, switch, say if RMU, if you consider that from there the isolation at the supplier end should take place, the RMU is located far away and a person from uh, client's uh, uh, technical team cannot reach that location and Sometimes he is not uh, well trained to isolate that RMU properly so that the supply gets isolated and the distribution side system is not affected. So the circuit breaker at the consumer's premises was introduced. And if you can read this regulation properly, there are two things, primary side and secondary side. So we want isolation at different stages and it should be conveniently done with the shortest time. That's why this introduction of above and below 11 kV and the circuit breaker uh, point was introduced. That is what my take. And after this introduction of point, now Maharashtra has started implemented, implementing of uh, air brake switch or uh, um, 
gang operated switch before the consumers premises at 11 kv level so which was not there earlier in maharashtra so uh, that is the point i want to highlight and it has uh, provided an additional safety to the distribution network that i have seen in my network the costing issue remains there uh, as shashank has rightly mentioned that is still a debate in maharashtra let me admit it yeah bhushan one thing i just wanted to know um see when you have made a deviation in the existing regulation have you got it approved from government deviation see, about deviation of changing uh, that breaker to uh, gang operated switch from the government side yeah i don't think so yeah see unless you get it approved from government under section under regulation number 136 you cannot make any deviation you have to get it approved from the state yes sir uh, thank you thank you mr hamant uh, so Sorry. sir it would be a coordination between the uh, central uh, 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 chief electrical inspector and the discom to get it approved is it no no i will come to that i will come to that See, uh, no, yeah, not them. Uh, come to that. Yes, Apostle, please. One point. Yes, one point. Yes, I wanted to please, add. Please, one point. Please. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry, sir. Please. In in, uh, in in. Thank you, sir. Please. Yeah, sir. In my factory, for example, the actual connected load is three hundred kVA. In one of the factory. Now, there is an RMU. At the outgoing, there is a circuit breaker VCB. the transformer is about 100 uh, meters away there is one more uh, circuit breaker uh, near the transformer now this part is okay but what happens is we provided the ug cable to the discom to connect to their overhead 11 kv line now technically if the discom is discom wanted to make a good electrical insulation they have to have a two pole structure on that particular part and they have to take the supply properly instead what they told is they don't have money for putting a two pole structure there or maybe a structure outside what they do is they, what they did is they took the cable through the post they tied the cable to the post and at the top they did something like a hook up hook up the 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 wire is the ug cable is hooked to the uh, line now the question is if we are talking about safety consumer side the maximum pressure is put and consumers are doing it but what the discom is doing so truly um, you know the, we have to address this particular situation okay if you if you put one side to the consumer and pressure the discom also also has to be put uh, and they also should make the their things proper i hope all of you agree to this uh, thank you uh, thank you thank you sir see uh, this is a, this is a complicated issue uh, but once we understand it will become easy the regulation says it discriminate between the type of insulation below 11 kv you are afford you can afford to provide a switch fuse or circuit breaker 11 kv and above only it comes into picture see this is the regulation which came recently in june uh, we can't say that regulation came overnight overnight regulation can be prescribed for example upar cinema theater after the tragedy a overnight regulation came into existence where the right type transformers alone can be provided within the within the multi story building premises so these are the things uh, regulators want to fine tune and avoid any part of the insulation to pose hazard for the occupants this is a specific regulation which is concerned with the provision of abiding by the standard by the consumers i don't think a uh, uh, rm rmu or ring main unit can be uh, relied upon a right of way consumer can have which a fireman says you are you are own breaker can be a fireman switch for your insulation to in case of emergency to leave alone we are not dealing with uh, as you as our president uh, expressed that there are so many things uh, like the distribution company in the especially in the distribution sector so you know. so coming to the subject of uh, safety by the consumer as per regulation i don't think uh, it is a, a exorbitant cost 
see any installation of this category, you will be in the order of crores. So just you are spending few less for the ST bracket. It 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 even reduces your space in the multi-story building and the sub urban areas. It reduces the space. If you provide a uh, DP structure and other arrangements, then it will be occupying more space than these small gears. Another thing, uh, what we can say is, it affects the suppliers. I learned from few consumers that whenever the failure of a, a protective gear in the consumer insulation, especially these insulations, the supplier's equipment got affected and they in turn levy penalty to the consumers. There are cases where the protective failure, we can otherwise say that this come also responsible for the failure of our insulation. But here the regulation says what is the whatever the uh, consumer exceeding 11 kV and the above voltage has to provide a circuit breaker. We, we don't think uh, that it is a wrong concept by the regulator, uh, as well as the cost economy uh, for CC. I don't think it will affect the entire project uh, of your consumer. In the, even the MSE, MEA with a 500 kV or 250 kV transformer, the project cost will be, we electrical people are uh, alone coming into picture at the final stage. We, we don't have any space, we don't have any money for that after spending crores of rupees, we don't have few lakhs for the important input equipment that protect our insulation, that isolate our insulation from the whole of the supplies premises. So it has to be rethink. Anyhow, we have to uh, uh, invite comments from other experts also. Uh, I may also be wrong. Anyhow, let us have comments from other people also. Now coming sir. to, uh, sir. Yeah, uh, Shashank here. I would like to just elaborate something more on whatever replies I heard Hello. from various no. people. Your audibility is not there, please. please. Hello. Am I audible? Ah, yes, you are audible. Please. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to uh, uh, speak a few more uh, lines on this. Uh, like, uh, I do completely agree with the uh, safety aspect of. Uh, things but uh, only for the safety aspect uh, if like i mentioned uh, a clear case like uh, wherein uh, after point of supply consumer had provided a switch fuse unit and uh, there was a transformer which was like 100 meters away uh, at the rear end of the factory there a circuit breaker was provided on the upstream and downstream still like uh, electrical inspector insisted on providing another circuit breaker to the consumer after the point of supply and his transformer was hardly uh, 400 kV, 500 kV. For such no capacity transformer, if CE starts mandating providing circuit breaker, because if you see at 22 kV voltage level, which is a prominent voltage level in uh, Mumbai area, uh, there the cost of the project uh, like a cost of switch fuse unit and uh, breaker is like almost five to six times there is a difference. And technically, I don't find anything additional. I do agree with the supplier's uh, uh, line should not get disconnected and uh, all of it. But uh, like supplier is supposed to provide the RMU and the incomer, which he gets it done from the consumer. At the end of the day, everything is coming to the consumer and uh, for small transformers, is the breaker really that effective? Multiple breakers is the question. Yes, uh, sir. The point is whether multiple breakers, this is somewhat different, whether we require a breaker at all at the point of supply. Another thing, we require one more breaker. I accept your view. The, the, the meaning in the provision of uh, further breakers in series in a, a circuit is quite uh, unnecessary that uh, the regulation doesn't also demand that regulation what the regulation provide is a strict liability of providing a circuit breaker at the point of supply there runs the matter uh, that doesn't mean if your distance goes beyond 50 meter 100 meter then if it goes beyond 300 meters do you provide so these are all not required and these are all the discretionary powers of electrical inspectors for which the uh, 
uh, it is not a deviation. It is accepting the uh, provision and you have to apprise uh, the electrical inspectors. In most of the states, uh, a single breaker without any additional breaker near the transformer are being accepted. So even for the 1000 kV transformer. So uh, these are the cases where the discretions can be made wrongly. You have to uh, appraise. So our point is, uh, we agree that so many breakers in the same circuit is not necessary. At the same time, we can't rely upon the uh, suppliers RMG gear for our own uh, uh, supply isolation. And uh, for the cost, as you said, it is high for the uh, small installations, but it may be possible. Uh, it may be possible for the installers also. So we sir, another, we have another, dealt much with, sir, we sir, have dealt much with, sir, we will come sir, again sir, to you. Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, Shashank, sir, are you referring to a high-rise building installation? No, no, uh, generally industrial. Okay, because in high-rise building installation, then the NBC uh, code where 20 meter uh, and that clause will come in picture. Uh, Bushan, and Bushan. Uh, multiple sir, yeah. I will come, I will come. We, have, we have dealt with the subject enough and we will have the participants' opinion also. So in, in, in the high rise, whether it is high rise or MSME or heavy industries or medical, so we can't provide law for each and every category of industry. So the law is for the whole of the country, for the technical matter. So I don't think the regulatory bodies will provide uh, concession depending upon the uh, capacity of the uh, consumers. So we will uh, finish the this discussion for this point. We will take it up, Mr. Sasang, for your valuable input uh, during the next round. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Bhushan uh, on specific two points because we are yes, providing yes. all the gears, everything, but people at workplace often do not uh, abide by the uh, safety norms. So what do you say? about the important provision relating to the uh, protocol, safety protocol, while undertaking any uh, breakdown or shutdown maintenance. Thank you. Yes. Uh, sir, um, for this breakdown and maintenance activities, uh, CEA has categorically given a beautiful regulation 21. Uh, especially when I am dealing with this uh, DISCOM uh, installations, and the particular accidents. What I find here is we are we have completely missed out the provisions of regulation 21 and 29 in combination. Uh, let me elaborate that. See, I have a few uh, ONM uh, discom sections where every year minimum uh, one accident of line staff is taking just because of this ignorance of regulation 21. What are those uh, provisions there? If you can read out in this, first line of this regulation says, before any conductor or apparatus is handled, adequate precautions shall be taken by earthing or any other suitable means to discharge electrically such conductor and the second part also and third part also in this regulation, such conductor or apparatus and any other adjacent conductor or apparatus, if there any, is uh, their danger, their form and to prevent any conductor or the apparatus from being accidentally or inadvertently electrically charged when a person are working thereon shall be followed as per the relevant standard. This particular section is very vital and important if we are taking any electrical maintenance. The uh, recent accidents in DISCOM reveal that this earthing of the conductor where your maintenance is going to take place and uh, earthing of the uh, uh, conductor adjacent to it is often ignored. So the um, ideally, if the suppose I'm on pole 21 and there is some maintenance activity has to be taken care, the 
the conductor between the next pole should be or suitably so that the electrical charge from the other side should be isolated before it could enter the person who is doing maintenance and the pole the conductor from the behind should also be earth so both side where maintenance is to be taken care those should be earth properly to avoid the danger to the person doing maintenance this particular thing is often ignored at discom level which is causing the accidents of line staff we have seen many uh, videos in our group nfa group and uh, even the discom group where the line staff is getting injured and these things are happening again and again the second part which is missed out is the basic ppe necessities the person who is climbing the pole and the person who is helping that uh, line staff who is working often miss the basic pp necessities it doesn't have helmet it doesn't have the uh, hd gloves it doesn't have the uh, shoes safety shoes and there's no wooden ladder to help him in case of emergency there's no provision of fall protection sometimes the electrical shock is very minor but the fall of the line staff makes more impact on his body and leads to uh, uh, fat non fatality or fatality so these are the simple provisions which are already elaborated in 21 which should be implemented at discom level to avoid these accidents the second part comes in line is 29 where provisions at the substation levels are also elaborated and i must say what wherever i have seen in uh, uh, mumbai and around uh, this basic things are missed out the few important words in this regulation which are missed out let me read out fire buckets filled with clean dry sand clean dry sand i just struggle to find a clean dry sand in this fire bucket there are fire buckets provided near the substation located at a very conspicuous location wonderfully placed but there is no dry sand so in case of emergency the wet sand uh, will not provide the adequate protection that is required this is missed out second the if a particular type of fire is taking place we must use a particular fire extinguisher so the do's and don'ts in case of fire at a location differ so the technical staff the maintenance staff and the fire fighting team should sit together and discuss the plan when this kind of electrical accidents or a fire takes place for a, our location what should be the steps what should we what should we do and what we should not do which fire extinguisher to use which should not be used this has been partic particularly mentioned in 29 that you have to follow the particular standard as per the type of fire one recent accident in domboli had this section this regulation ignored and which led to spread of fires to the other uh, the neighboring factories so these regulations implementation at the ground level by the safety officer uh, nominated under regulation 5 is important then in case if a chartered electrical safety engineer is doing um, a safety um, this inspection of a particular location which is below 11 kv and uh, he is submitting the report this regulation 21 29 implementation should be thoroughly verified discussed with the management and even the team who is going to implement these regulations if this thing happens and there is a clear mindset with the people of the factory who are doing for who are doing the maintenance the safety activity and the management 
this will provide a clear safety scenario which are which we are expecting from these ce regulations so uh, this regulation 21 29 regulation 5 regulation 6 everything go hand in hand this okay. is what i just want to convey thank, thank you. you thank you appa sir thank you bhushan ji i think uh, raman sali ji please uh, tell our opinion yes sir so uh, actually this is a question or maybe discussion with bhushan bhushan we are enforcing our regulations what you said is perfectly correct perfectly right but i always wonder i also worked as electrical inspector i know uh, i mean the limitations with us also but i think it is part of the duty which we perform as electrical inspector when we go to the annual inspection of uh, distribution substation sections we need to check whether they do have a proper pp placed properly maintained in the register and whether it is issued to the concerned consumers. I think it should become a regular part of our inspection. I think that will bring more discipline uh, to all these things. Okay. Yes, adding adding to that, uh, every electrical inspector, when he goes to the uh, inspection, he should do this activity, the, the thing that I have said, the management, the safety team, the discussion about these regulation 21, 29, five six everything should be discussed so that they have that mindset that is what i want to add Thank one, you. one more thing we can add to this that we can make a specific forms for such, such type of inspections when we go to inspection of sub, uh, discom subdivision what should be the form what point should we check like we have form one two three in our regulations such forms we can make at our level also <laughs> to check the Instance. No, sir. I feel this form given in CDA regulation is self-sufficient. We can add the regulations that we are talking just now and we can emphasize on them at that level because I am struggling to get this form 3, form 2 from um, uh, this uh, DISCOM and uh, even uh, from the consumers. I am giving them the copy to you know get these things elaborated and uh, done. So this is the reality. We have to work hard towards the complete implementation of the okay. regulation. I am playing my bit and I want my uh, colleagues to play their bit too so that a complete safety scenario is taken care. Thank you. Sir. Uh, thank you. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bhushan and Haman Saliji. Uh, so it is, it, it does, it, as you said, the Safety starts from the consumer also because of uh, the safety officer. The, the role of safety officer is to be an electrical inspector. He is an internal electrical inspector to observe, test, logbook, and maintenance. So these are the things that he has to do. And uh, it is uh, it is certain that the consumer should be aware of the uh, provisions of filling up forms. It's not, it should be ritual. It is not sufficient to have the forms and uh, these things alone. Uh, it should it should be letter and straight. We hope that our continuous uh, uh, awareness creation among the consumers and the implementers uh, among the consumers will improve the situation. And hereafter, we will be having only uh, uh, form with letter and straight. Then, if you won't have the form, then it will be fine tuned and raised to the. Uh, this is the you see. The regulation can't provide a meticulous uh, form for each and every. So it is up to the consumer. They have to devise according to the work grounds, according to the uh, work area. Uh, so it is all the art, art of uh, safety engineers in the field. And they have to make uh, suitable forms without deviating from the uh, fundamental principles of uh, regulations and standards. Now, so we are uh, taking much time on this. I have to restrict another few minutes. So I will come again to Mr. Uh, uh, I think Manu Varki. Is, are you here, sir? Mr. Manu Varki. I would like to request yes, you. Sir. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Because during the discussion, uh, we had uh, the uh, safety within the consumer premises uh, with regard to the RCD and everything. Now I would like to ask you one more uh, important point. Has a CPWD uh, project uh, handled much, but in the regulation have also been uh, revised uh, in 2023 to the effect that 
there are two subjects one is earth loop impedance another is earth resistance even after the uh, revision of regulations we are still uh, confused with the provision of our confusing earth resistance and earth loop impedance where it applies how it can be uh, perceived that's the thing we have to make uh, avoid confusion among the uh, installers or those other consumers please please put something over yes sir chale the regarding the earthing up installations you have to see ht and lt installation separately because the method of uh, production that is employed in these two installations are uh, two different philosophies are used regarding the st side uh, that, that is given in regulation 50 uh, of the uh, ce regulations it is uh, the whole production is provided by the uh, yeah, current that is returned by the earth electrode so the uh, the integrity of the earth electrodes is important in case of a an st installation so uh, the verification part will involve measurement of the earth resistance of the insulation and the design involves the selection of the earthing system however if we come to the lt side uh, this is dealt in the regulation 43 here to ensure a, a reliable earthing system uh, mo uh, more than the earthing resistance it, it should be the reliance on automatic disconnection of supply for automatic disconnection of supply we should have a, a loop impedance that is sufficiently low that will cause operation of the protective device in the event of a fault so the earth electrode has a less role to play in the lt side here the role of the earth, earth electrode is limited to referencing the system to ground and but the fault protection is handled by the uh, by having a lower loop impedance if you can see the regulation 43 and uh, sub part 9 it talks about the uh, loop, loop impedance yes all earthing system shall have a earth fault earth fault low impedance sufficiently low to permit adequate fault current for the operation of protective device within the time stipulated in the relevant standards so this means that we should design the system with a low enough earth fault loop impedance that would cause a flow of Uh, fault current that is sufficient for our mcb or mccb or the acb to trip yes so that is it sir okay yeah oh the thing is uh, earth loop impedance and earth resistance here also should not be confused by the people as uh, manu ji expressed earth loop impedance is applicable for the lv insulation where the uh, major earth fault current seeks a path through the protective earthing terminal earthing conductor so the uh, part of earth electrodes doesn't come into picture uh, we have earth very electrode, yes, yes, earth electrode has a role but only for referencing yes. the system to yes earth yes so so in simple words we can say that for lv insulation you adapt tns system and the earth loop impedance as per regulation and if it comes to the ht insulation you who address the issue of uh, step and touch potential and uh, current division everything then go for earth resistance it's not only earth electrode it depends on the earth uh, measure there are so many things available the ultimate purpose is to provide a safety in lt side for safe and uh, clear operation of automatic protective device and st side to limit the fault current before the clearance of the fault so these are the two things people should keep in mind so with this uh, i think we can uh, sir hemant sir sir do you want to say anything about uh, uh, the act and other provisions so we can go for the uh, participants uh, we can take some questions yes sir we we have sufficient provisions in our act mm. but i think the i think we are not using the various provisions which have been provided in the act 
see how far we see the person is convicted as per the act. If we see the number of accidents which are happening at the end, who is held responsible? In how many cases the actually responsible person is got convicted? Say our section 1, uh, 149, 146, 149, 150, and 115 all are interconnected. Whose responsibility, how it is to fix that has also been mentioned uh, <laughs> it clearly in those clause, but that is not happening. We need to check why it is so happening, why the person who is responsible is not getting punished as it is expected. So this is giving rise to the number of accidents which are happening. There is no reduction in number of accidents. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you all uh, uh, panelists for your uh, expert opinion and uh, interactions. It's a very beautiful session. Now, I think we can uh, take uh, the questions. I think Mr. Mahendra Chilukuri, you raised your hand, please. Uh, please, sir. Mahendra Silukuri, are you here? Please unmute. Dr. Silukuri, sir. I think Amiradalal is also there who raised the hand. Amiradalal, can you please unmute? Yeah, I got it unmuted just now. You are audible, please. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing is about uh, HD breaker. Uh, HD breaker, you actually uh, put the breaker not for the purpose of uh, connecting the Barkov's relay and other things. It is for 47, I think 47 2 2. The provision. Earth fault or earth leakage protection to disconnect supply exceeds limit of current, uh, keeping the contact potential within reasonable values. Page number 119. So I just want to make that point clear. That is according to my reading. Okay, okay. Okay, Mr. Amir Lal. Yeah, one more point. Uh, this is regarding 146, 151, and 68. Is there, by any way, and if we can uh, put pressure or put uh, a litigation or something like that to get uh, three, four, five regulation, three, four, five people can also report the accidents and uh, complaints regarding non-compliances because they are also i mean uh, given some responsibility by regulation so these people are also competent enough to understand what is wrong with the installation yes uh regarding uh man people who manage the installation as per regulation three four five are more important and there are a lot of uh, uh, violations. The act can be, I mean, uh, now the <laughs> act see, is only giving. It. Yes. yes, we will take it up. Yes. The MFA will take it up because uh, there are a lot of things, uh, industries operating in the country without, uh, the pro without the people. Because one side, all the engineers and uh, people are going towards it. All lead, roads lead to Rome. They are all for the IT. So there are very few people in this core sector. <coughs> anyhow, anyhow, it's the safety of the uh, installation and people uh, will take it up. Mr. Gopaji, please. please. Uh... Yes, uh, Mr. Amarad told that uh, the people uh, covered under regulation 345 only should uh, be able to give a complaint. Why to restrict to only... No, no, I am not saying to restrict. I am adding... Yeah, yeah, any common citizen of India, any citizen yeah, of India that is the best thing. to make a complaint. Yeah, that should be the way. I think we have to start to work on uh, work on this uh, the regulation. Of course, there are several mistakes also in the regulation. For example, if you look at the regulation 44 RCD, paragraph number 3, it says no need of uh, RCD, but then uh, the contents are mistake. 
it says as per regulation 76 and you know uh, if you if you correct uh, read that particular clause uh, above sir can you take that regulation yes, yes. 76 or 40 44 44 44 44 So we should work uh, to ensure that uh, anybody, any Indian citizen should be able to complain of a bad work. Because finally people are dying. Why Why common people should uh, uh, look for experts to make a complaint? Sir, 44. 44. Yes. 44, paragraph 3. Provided further that such protective devices shall not be required for supply lines having protective device which are effectively bonded to neutral of the supply transformer and conforming to regulation 76. Question is, supply lines having protective device which is effectively bonded to the neutral of the supply. Which protective device will be, able, will be bonded to the neutral of the supply? It is not protective device, protective conductor which are effectively bonded to the neutral. So, this is a mistake. Not protective device, but protective conductor. Similarly, and confirming to Regulation 76. Regulation 76 is not talking this subject. Revol Regulation 74 is talking this subject. Regulation 74, it is talking 74 is the return path, the metallic return path. So, basically, this is a supplement to Regulation uh, 18. Yes. So like this, a lot of mistakes are, uh, I would say, okay, not mistakes. A lot of improvements uh, are possible with respect to the technical part. So probably we can, we can maybe we can make a committee and we can, uh, the committee members of NFE can work for finding out such, uh, you know, improvements. And we can write to the government and we can put, uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, take it up further for change in the regulation. I hope it's possible. Okay, thank you, thank you. Actually, uh, see, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, I would okay. like to add, see what Gopaji has raised a question that is actually correct. Because I have seen that whenever these regulations are framed, I think the common person, or common, let us forget about common person, but the expert in this regard are not being are not getting involved into formation of these things so that is actually great need they should involve the expertise from the other fields also not from the government so that is one more thing and another thing which was uh, gopaji mentioned about the a common person can make any complaint that question more relates with the section 151 which has limited uh, given a uh, very limited access to only to the certain persons like inspectors and supply company and police but if common person has to approach to court he doesn't have such uh, approach at present maybe it is considered that a common person is not technically expert to uh, i mean uh, file such complaint based on the technical reasons that could be the reason but of course we can take up this point to the government maybe it could be even pil also we can file and then we can uh, I mean, we can uh, get what we want actually from this out of this. Uh, thank you, thank you, Herman Sali. You will certainly take it up. We have, it's already discussed some points because the participation, yeah, the regulators are as well as the BAS are providing uh, the all the standards in the uh, website, but there is no participation. At least, let us uh, NFA tag this to the regulators and the standard making bodies. Uh, to have some fine trading. So next uh, one, Mr. Uh, Swamnath Cuba. Uh, sir, are you available? Uh, please. So Swamnath Cuba, please unmute. Yes, Thank sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. yes. <coughs> please, sir, you, you raised your hand. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, actually, a uh, few of things were to discuss, like uh, we are electrical-based company as Akas Enterprises from long time. So, uh, as per the uh, factory acts, the, the discussions like if anything, the factory uh, electrical accidents is happen. So, firstly, who will be responsible? There is uh, some doubtful questions for that. Uh, Haman Sali, would you like to say anything on this? Even whenever the thing happen in their consumer premises, uh, regulation clearly says that the owner is responsible. Owner means 
uh, it depends upon the interest and they would have uh, uh, interested such work to specific people in the can yes sir <laughs> so how, you, how to interpret uh, that part no, no, it, it all depends upon the see there is a provision uh, for example if it has not taken place with the connivance of the uh, owner then you can't charge the owner because some lapses are owner has not told that you should do this and so non -sort. it all depends upon the uh, circumstances and the investigation for example in lot of the uh, multi story buildings nowadays uh, uh, the uh, what do you call that uh, association office bearers are arrested do you say that uh, you, can you say that uh, it should be is it correct or not but whenever a major thing happens uh, depending upon the investigation process and the alarm uh, alarm alarming level of uh, uh, so it can gain a yeah, major people also get entangled unless uh, it will be uh, placed vested with the uh, engineers and supervisors or the contractors. Uh, if you, say specifically, you, can, you can contact us for any specific issues, then we can discuss that. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, old Mr. Ravindra Shink. Uh, you also raised your hand. Please unmute and speak. Mr. Ravindra Singh. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon, sir. Please. So, my question is uh, we have just discussed uh, about this RMU before this uh, uh, ST meters, and then that after ST meter, there is a VCB, and then the distance which we have discussed 100 meters and all. And before transfers, we are putting up another uh, circuit breaker and on the LT sides also. I think, sir, this is uh, as per the uh, system protection, it is essential, and we have to convince the client that these are the protection which can save your operational uh, systems during the fault conditions. So, uh, in industries like for maybe the uh, garment industries or the, some other factories. During the product uh, productions or the number of uh, outgoing feeders are there, so the pro level of protection should be as such, which can protect the other lineup uh, with the fault lines. So there should not be any such uh, uh, I mean uh, controversy that the uh, distance when the distance increases we have to be reduced the breaker cost uh, is uh, hardly of uh, maybe the 50000 60000 or the below the lakh for the 500 kvs and the 600 k 30 kvs transfer uh, below this rating capacity what I feel, whether it is a 100 kVA or it is a 1000 kVA, from the electrical system point of view, we have to have a complete protection system on all the aspects. That is one. Second is we have talking about the two-way pole structures where the geo is uh, mandatory or not. I feel, sir, when we're taking the tappings from the ST lines, uh, I mean, most of the, in Rajasthan, there's, there's a JVV channel is there. Nowadays, they are just uh, removing the two pole structure and giving the tapping uh, with the uh, ST cables, XLT cable, and they're connected to the RMUs. And after RMU, cable is entering into the client's premises. So it is client's uh, choice whether they want to have a, another deep double pole structures within their premises and then the ST meter and then VCB. In case if they want to shut down their system and they want to do any kind of uh, services or maintenance, they can switch down the, they can switch off their VCB and do the uh, their uh, maintenance and whatever. They cannot depend, they should not be depend on the JVVNL or the government body that they come and they strip their system and then we'll start doing this. So thank you, sir. thank you. Thank yeah. you for your uh, elaborate and uh, yeah. uh, proper uh, solution for this issue. Sir, where are you from, sir? I am what... from Jaipur. I am from Jaipur, sir. No, no. Which which organization you are from? Uh, I am from JR Square. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next uh, one, Mr. Shomnath uh, Kuba. He raised this. Uh, can you please? Is Mr. Shomnath available here? Yes, yes sir. Already resolved, sir. Uh, what oh, we okay, have okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you,
Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. Uh, and uh, Sunil Biswal, you earlier raised during the webinar session. Sorry, please. Uh, uh, admit, uh, is it Sunil Biswal? Okay, sir. Am I audible? Ah, yeah, yeah. Audible, please. Okay. Now, uh, today's discussion we started with uh, Regulation One Forty Six and One Fifty One, where uh, it says about uh, if there is any contravention uh, and uh, cognizance of offence uh, such things. Uh, as uh, practicing electric contract, we often see that there are many organizations where they clearly flout the standing provisions. Uh, in many, uh, suppose, uh, for, I would say uh, there is a big educational institution, government institution, and they don't have any electrical engineers, and they have some civil um, engineers who, as a, there is any electrical fault, they mobilize uh, help of uh, the nearby uh, non-certified technicians, and they ask them to climb over to pole and replace the fuse, uh, do minor, uh, uh, I mean, such things. So in that case, uh, if any accident happens, so clearly uh, there would be no expert nearby to guide them how to work safely. So in such cases, are we in a position to lodge a complaint? Because uh, not that we have not lodged complaint, but then it has mostly gone on headed. That is one thing that I would, uh, that is my first question. Okay, so what about, uh, see, we, we can't segregate the, the complaints among government, distribution company, consumer. Whoever, see, can you lodge a complaint on a consumer? Why do you say that the government alone should be lodged on the distribution company? Everybody is violating the provisions. As you said, uh, there are no people uh, in the companies also, the regulation, Six competent electrical safety engineers, as well as the safety officer, is totally uh, neglected in our whole country. Have we ever uh, raised this issue? Uh, so, so these are the things that we have to uh, identify. As you said, that you have identified the lapses on particular sector, but there are a lot of uh, uh, violations occurring in our country in all sectors. We can't say that we are better, they are uh, not good. So these are these blame game if we do not do. We should understand that they should not cause any hazard to the consumers. For this, you always have your right. You can lodge a complaint in your area. And uh, there is... And the point, point is that uh, 151 says a cognizance, cognizance of offense you, can you only be entertained. You, no, you can't. Police can lodge a complaint. So you, as a public, you can make a complaint to the police. They, they in turn will do, depending upon the thing. This is happening. Whenever a major thing occurs, the public will automatically rush to the police station. That's why the provision is given for the police inspector also. I do not speak on the small, small uh, regulations, say, whether you have air you have connected, or whether you have provided a bracket. These are the issues which do not come into picture as far as the complaints is concerned. I am dealing with the major issues where major number of accidents occur in the roads, streets, where public readily go to the police station, they lodge their complaints. The provision is already there, is that? At Yaman Sali has also as well. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I would like to answer his question regarding section 151. Ma See, as a common person, um, how to approach or how how the, the, the person can get confirmed that cognizance of his, uh, whatever he has noticed, which is not contradictory to the regulations and safety uh, is being taken care of. So what common person can do, he can approach to authority like electrical inspector of that particular area, supply company of that particular area, or even the police station also, because now police are also authorized to lodge a complaint and on whose complaint the court can take the cognizance. So these are the three ways through which you can approach to the concerned authority by which way the cognizance of offense can be taken. Okay, thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, uh, can, I add, can I add one more thing in there? Please, uh, please sir. Uh, yes. But actually, this uh, the particular section only talks about cognizance of uh, cases to be taken under the Electricity Act. But when a uh, death has happened or a someone is harmed. Other sections of the IPC will be attracted. So, yes. even if uh, the uh, cognizance cannot be taken under the Electricity Act, uh, under IPC, negligence is an uh, offence that can be prosecuted. And the uh, common public has the right to uh, file a case in this regard. 
under the IPC. Yes. Yes, that is what uh, yeah. I mean. Should, so, should uh, we should yeah. we wait till uh, till some accident has happened? I mean, when we see that the rules are being contravened, and this may lead to some hazardous situation later on, that is the point when the complaint should be lodged and it should be uh, um, addressed. Uh, see, I will. I would like to read a uh, amendment which happened in two thousand seven. That is section number one fifty one a. It reads, for the purpose of the investigation of an offence punishable under the power of the Police Act, the police officer shall have all powers as provided uh, in Chapter Twelve of the Investigation uh, Investigation Code of Criminal Procedure. So through through this section, he can approach to the court uh, the the cases related with the contraventions with the Electrical Act and rules or regulations made there under. Ah, uh, Raman sir. So actually, there is a general uh, fear among the public uh, whether the electricity is uh, beyond our scope or to larger complaint. It's not like that. Whether it's a road accident or electricity accident, yes, is it yes. beyond a limit, then every public has its right. That's why the, it has given powers to the police inspector also. That means when the police inspector is given power, everything comes into picture. But uh, the Generally, electrical inspector, why it is quoted is as a technical matter and for violations among the consumers, small, small technical aspects they can do. If a major thing occurs, then it's always open to the general public and uh, the police station, local police station. Electrical inspector will become an uh, uh, expert to analyze and give advice to the police. Okay, sir. Then a lot of questions. Sir, my next, I have one more question, sir. Uh, yeah, sir, one second. Uh, I will go through soon, sir. There are a lot of people who have raised their hand. I will go one by one I will, and I will come to you again, too, sir. Uh, sir. Okay, you, Mr. Sunil, please uh, cut short within a few seconds. Please, go ahead. My, go ahead. my, my next question is regarding uh, CA Regulation 31. It says that the electrical work has to be executed directly under supervision of a person holding certificate of competency and by a person holding a permit. Now, this is one uh, regulation which is routinely flouted by many, I mean, 80% of the cases in act. My, uh, my point of view views are uh, uh, in backdrop of uh, things which are happening in Odisha. 80% of contractors who are working in field, even inside Navratan companies, they do not comply to this role. They, they take some power of attorney from someone and then, then they carry on working as if they are the electrical, bona fide electrical contractors. There is no such uh, uh, supervisor found uh, nearby where the work is going on. So this is a major um, provision which must be implemented in letter and spirit to ensure safety in uh, uh, workplace or even in safety in the installations. Okay, sir. Actually, this is uh, generic but important thing. The stakeholders should be involved. Our NFE will make the unity of stakeholders, not only the uh, electrical inspectors, the contractor association, the distribution company, electrical inspectors. Everybody have to be sensitized and a, a joint uh, measure to address these issues, whether footing of a rule three person uh, by the companies or giving effective supply to the companies. So a lot of things come into picture. We NFE will try to hard uh, and we will require all our support on this. Next question is from uh, Davis Alapan. Sir, please unmute and uh, Mr. Davis Alapan, please unmute and uh, Sir, are you here? Okay. I will come to the next person, Ashay Manan. Sir, Ashay Manan, are you here? Uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm Davis here. Uh, yeah, please, please, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, having this very insightful panel uh, discussion. A lot of insight. Uh, and here, uh, one point which I wanted to mention here, I'm very happy to see today that R21, Regulation 21 has been addressed by Bhushan. And I just want to add that, I want to appreciate that because Accidents are happening in the field, not on the drawing board. So from that aspect, uh, the shutdown when you are, uh, and it is very clearly mentioned in uh, Regulation 21, 
what is the importance of planning what is the importance of uh, hazard identification what are the sop you have to follow when you when you talk about an sop it itself talks about lot of uh, steps when you are conducting a shutdown job now this is also linked to the regulation number 3 4 and 5 the competency so many of the accidents which i have come across rather i have investigated i find that incompetent people are on the job if the person is competent he is able to identify the hazard there itself in, on the field when you are taking a shutdown so i think uh, today is uh, i think more importance is given to regulation 21 thank you for that so thank you more than yeah thank you and again one more challenge happening here because mo in most of the industries even for discom outsourcing is a, a new uh, new way of working so when people are outsourced they have been picked up from here and there and they are not uh, getting proper training so that's just why i want to add that okay thank you sir so we you. have a couple of 16 more questions yeah, yeah, and i'll come to that i will come to the question then people who raise uh, uh, will be tackled up so mahendra silukuri your 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 uh, question is related to can public file a case it was discussed so then amir dalal <coughs> so tt system something so i think we have also discussed in pallavi mukherji our uh, mumbai chapter secretary uh, what's your, her question is for the knowledge and vital information i wanted to know that many electrical installations in residential properties have been done by technicians and how to make them understand about the wiring and the connections which will have safety aspect i feel ca regulation should also be interpreted in local language thank local language so your your uh, opinion is to interpret the ca in local okay it's also a good thing uh, because the a uh, final electrician uh, has to be appraised it's an important step we have we have already taken top down approach but we have not touched the electrician level uh, unless we sensitize the electrician it's a very great uh, mass in our country so we have to do that it's a very good suggestion we will do that then the next question is from sunil beswal i think we have discussed it now Uh, Mahendra Chilukuri also uh, Act 2000 could be amended or review state jurisdiction to commander under no no Electricity Act 2003 should be amended to uh, review electricity supply state jurisdiction to come under one single window and authority until then electrification keeps happening without anyone taking responsibility. um so coming to our question electricity is a concurrent subject is a constitutional provision uh, we can't touch upon upon it and safety comes under the state government uh, so under one single window means uh, only technical approval everything can be brought under one single window not the law enforcement now uh, coming to amritla again tnc system either you have to make sure i think we can go for technical uh, related discussion amridhalal is always interested in more of technical discussion when anyway, you go i will read the question the system either you have to make sure the neutral is not alone is broken or should have a voltage monitoring device to trip the phase conductor sir so, amridhalal you can yeah uh, this is just to uh, make sure when you have a broken neutral conductor the phase conductor is going to have the voltage on neutral as well as the earth conductor so it is better to trip the whole system in case of a neutral broken in tnc system okay so uh, good suggestion actually neutral Over voltage due to neutral breakage as well as over voltage due to vesti line fault is there. We we can discuss all these technical issues uh, in a later for uh, webinar. But as you said that uh, the integrity of uh, TNC 
that Manu has already explained on consumers. It's a long way we have to achieve. Uh, till such time, we can have some protective devices that we have discussed in our NFE group. It is adapted in UK also for any over voltage protection from the supplier side. And uh, again, uh, Mr. Mahendra Silukuri, I think, uh, uh, sir, Mr. Silukuri, are you here? You can, because a lot of questions you have raised. And uh, okay, okay, I will, uh, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, sir, 15 questions you have raised. Why can't you uh, unmute and uh, come the line? Okay, I will go to the next person, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar. Uh, what is the best practice a utility should follow regarding protective earth conductor while providing service connection to customer with UG cable system to avoid over voltage condition during fault or neutral voltage rise and electric shock at consumer? <coughs> Sir, it's a very good subject. We should be dealt with in detail. Regulation 18 is there that we have discussed along with Manuvarki. It is there in our country for the past 100 years, but it is still missing, elusive, whether either the consumer uh, is ready to connect his PE conductor to the earth in neutral of supplier, or whether the supplier can segregate his, uh, uh, what do you call this, earthing system, neutral earthing, body earthing from the substation. So these are very typical areas that we can, we, we already had some webinars on this. We will have a webinar on uh, this specific issue, how to address in a practical manner, depending upon the conditions. Uh, another question is from Mahendra Chilukuri. So yeah, I will come to our question combined later, sir. Now, Unayak Joshi, he raised a question. Want to know about arc flash and analysis of the same. So we can have such a technical issue, sir. Here, as far as arc flash is concerned, uh, it is out of uh, not only this uh, out of portion of today's subject, it is out of portion of uh, regulation also. We will discuss in our forum. Then, from Amiradala, 47.2.2 is the reason for breaker. Not part okay. We will take it. Milind Sardesa. Sas, can a gist of discussion on the regulation be cited with the CA regulation number section so we can refresh? Sir, <coughs> we can go to the website, CA website. So most of the standards and regulations are free of cost. It is available. Our standards are on par with IEC, but a cost of, uh, the cost of IEC could be around 10,000 or 20,000 rupees. It is freely available in the website, BES website in the form of NEC or 732-3043. Please uh, take and try to reach those sites and get it uh, downloaded. Uh, then Mahendra, why fault, Mahendra Silukuri, why fault loop impedance is not applicable to ST. Sir, I don't understand uh, your question. As a doctorate, you should know that fault loop in ST, uh, the protective conductor alone is not a fault return path. In LT, the voltage is very low, 240 something for air fault that can be safely brought towards a PE conductor alone. In ST side, it's a grid. So, Earth fault loop impedance is not applicable there. Earth resistance and it's not only the earth resistance fault. So it's a fault uh, fault level, it's a fault clearing time and duration and the step and test potential, various factors on the integrated approach. We can't apply uh, a fault loop impedance for a uh, high area where SV system are applicable. Uh, then again for some Haridas Thakre. Sir, now in this rainy season, most of the distribution transformers are found with covering creepers. This is the burning situation. Most of the DPs are without lightning. <coughs> okay, sir. You 
I know. I think you are from Maharashtra. I have seen your posters also. Uh, Mr. Ramdas Gandhagal also has uh, been working on this uh, through the Kenya. So we appreciate all our uh, efforts in addressing these issues. But uh, we also request you can involve yourselves with our local people, uh, local NFE members, and uh, bring the matter to the knowledge of distribution company. Uh, they have to do, but it doesn't happen. Means we should also be uh, in a position to appraise them to have it done. In many places, after appraising, it has happened. Please take it. Another question from you is how this problem can be solved unless we cease regulation, it is to be segregated. So the question is. I couldn't understand, sir. How this problem, what problem? Unless with C, C, A, safety regulation needs to be. Okay, sir. <coughs> I couldn't infer because it's not clear. And uh, I will come to the a series of questions posed by Mr. Mahendra Sulkiri. Sir, in the meantime, one Mr. Ashay man and you raised your hand. Please. Uh, Sir, please unmute and ask for a question, sir. Sir, say, madam. I think. Can I ask one question? Please. Yeah. The regulation three, whether it is applicable for residential consumers also, because the sentence says all electrical installations. So this is partly a law and partly a technical uh, document. So the law applies to when you're words described are not very clear, then it applies to all. Yes, certainly it applies to all, not only healthy consumers. We have three crores of uh, uh, say for example. No, but but then designated know. person for a house is I, 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 will, I, I, will, I will address your question. Yes. We have crores of healthy consumers, but we have hundreds of uh, electrical supervisors. That doesn't mean that we can neglect this installation. But what we have in the LV installation, it's only an electrician job. It is an electrician job. And what you have to do is you simply put and take some periodical uh, maintenance and aware of the fact through the licensed electrician contract. If you, uh, if you, if we have to uh, see the practical aspect of the law also. Law says that every citizen should be protected. It's a fundamental right. But we can't say that every citizen can be posted with a police person. So it, depending upon the nature, uh, we can uh, take into account. Uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, it is required for the SV, sir, 11 KV and above installation, where the operation and maintenance of SV gears are also coming into picture. As far as LV installation is concerned, it is sufficient if you have uh, uh, a, a licensed electrician. Uh, finally, it says a person who is competent, the board, licensing board, which issues the certificate, says for what work he is empowered. He just to see whether such a person is appointed in an LT premises. I don't say for the domestic and other things. You are the. No, my, my intention is saying that it. Three and uh, if you see six, chartered electrical safety engineer because yeah. the chartered safety electrical can engineer can come and inspect even yeah. if the voltage level is notified as six fifty volts. Okay. So uh, pro the number three provision should be very specific. Also, I am again repeating uh, your concern with 
CESC regulation C is quite clear. It is yet to tax players. Uh, most of the government is yet to uh, provide uh, uh, examination, conduct examination, select people. That's a different part. It has not taken place. Regulation 3, as I have already told, it has to be observed. Whether it is a small institution or big institution, it has to be observed. And the nature of work has to be analyzed before enforcing it. It can't say that, uh, regulation can't say that you provide a two supervisor, three supervisor, one supervisor. It's all the discretion of the owner. If he has more, more area or more vulnerable areas involving complex situation, he is at liberty. Uh, so it all depends upon the uh, discretion of the owner. He is ultimately responsible. Okay, then. Sir Mahendra Silukuri, are you here? Sir, he's not there, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, your questions are uh, uh, already addressed and few more questions I can come. Uh, one is, meter should be on each floor. It was discussed. Um, Non-compliance, this rule is liable. I couldn't understand. My Passion is that why many entities are not following Act 2003 in 2024. So it's a very generic. We, I can't infer anything from this question. From Vinayak Joshi, want to know about the asset that is addressed. And again, Mayanda Sukri, uh, all electrocutions are happening due to high impedance fault and no action from utility or public. Yes, all public places accidents are due to uh, high impulse fault. The public can't do anything on this one. The utility can do. And another question is, why the only way HIF can be avoided with overhead cable, which discom is supplying power. <coughs> I think you mean that uh, high impulse fault can be avoided in overhead cable. If such a thing is practically possible as a, uh, what do you call as a, a scientist, you can put forward, we will take it up to the central ministry. So it can be, you say that overhead, line, overhead cable, that I mean it is overhead line. If anything happens to the snapping of our conductor, it can be easily uh, detected and Cut off. That is our intention. Please bring out a, a practical situation as an NFE member. We will take it up to the central. And so these are all. I think we have covered all the question answer. And I mean, it's all who are still raising your hand. Please, please come out. Please tell sir. Amrit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, my question is on regulation number five. Ah. Regulation number five, electrical safety officer. Yes. See this uh, reg uh, regulation five three is asking for factory act connected load more than two fifty. Does that means two fifty below it is not required? Why there is a specification I'm uh, on two fifty kW and two thousand kW connected? Because it's already says every electrical installation under factory act. Yes, uh, you can practically see it was a, it was a question uh, analogous. It's not a technical question. It is analogous to another question raised by another. Yeah, person. yeah. Same. Ah. It's almost the same. Kilo <laughs> to kilowatt. You see, <laughs> factories. Why they have uh, specifically put the factories act here? It's an electricity act. But as per factories, they want to fix some uh, uh, barrier what you call some margin, some level up to which it can be implemented. If it goes below, below 250 means, then the the possibility of uh, uh, hazard as well as other uh, complexity of installation would automatically be low. So that way, that's why for a practical approach, they have 
put some barrier. So these uh, levels are normally put in all regulations. Uh, in constitution only it can be there. Every citizen should be protected. In regulations, I can't say that it is, it's, it is diluted. The police and uh, policing, people and policing, it's a, it's a thing. It's a general concept in all the international law enforcement. If there are 1,000 people, one police. If it is 10,000 people, ten uh, one police. So it all depends. For people, police ratio shall be reasonable, affordable, and practical. So this is the basic thing that how all the developed and developed... No, but but the, the question, sir, is uh, the sentence starts with for every electrical installation, including hmm. a factory registered. That means uh, even if your uh, installation is having 10 kW, this provision is uh, applicable. No, no, no. no if, you, if you take literally every word by word, then <laughs> there will be another literal, uh, <laughs> what do you call that? Uh, interpretation will be another thing. So it will go, we should see practically whether then we can uh, interpret, whether it is interpretation or misinterpretation, we should first analyze whether it is practical. If you see, you want to say that every household person is domestic premises should have a safety officer. So no, we should, it's uh, not. Every <laughs> 50 kilowatt means you, you <laughs> have to apply one. <laughs> But the that. problem is this document is partly legal. That is, that is another part, whether it may be objectionable to you, the lines. The line may be, the, some regulator can say that it is, is correct in this aspect. So we will deal with that separately. In our forum also, we can discuss that particular part. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. We had a very nice... Uh, and long, lengthy. So regulation normally will be, <coughs> people will find it bore. Uh, it is not addressing any specific uh, case study or uh, technical aspect, but it all are intended for the smooth functioning of in every electrical installation and the safe at workplace as well as home everywhere. So, I should thank all the participants. Now I will close this session. Thank you all. Thank you all the participants, the panelists. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Uh, sir, you have to end the webinar. Yes, yes, I will end. I will end. Uh... Okay, sir.